So we test the first part to satisfy ourselves that what management is representing in the financial statements is something that can be relied upon. That's the first thing. Secondly, management is also required in terms of the performance objectives of the institution to report on how they performed on the qualitative and other objectives that they set. So that when they say, yes, the money that we spent, in the same report you can be able to see here are the things that they say they bought with the money. So that's the second thing that we test. Did they report on the things they claim to have bought in a manner that is not going to be misleading? to whoever is reading that particular set of financial statements. <clears throat> the third thing is that all monies that are appropriated in the public domain for use in a public purpose need to be used in compliance with certain laws and regulations that govern matters of finance insofar as that institution is concerned. Now if I take a pause, <clears throat> there are three key categories of things that we test. It's the accuracy and the fair presentation of the financial numbers. The second one being the reporting accurately on performance. And the third category is compliance with all the laws and regulations. Now if a particular audit that we do gets a clearance from us in the sense that we are okay and happy with the way they've handled those three things, we then arrive at what we call a clean audit which means that insofar as the financial statements are concerned, they are unqualified. Insofar as the other two areas are concerned, we did not find any material findings where they have deviated either from the manner in which and the substance on which they have reported, and secondly, they have not deviated significantly from any of the laws that impact on their ability to handle finances in their institution. So if an institution passes those three things, we then say it gets a clean audit. <clears throat> so in our situation, we had 13 of those in the previous year, and we now have about 30 of them. And the reason we've seen this migration in doing our analysis, we have seen that those institutions have decided if there was a chief financial officer who did not meet the minimum requirement, they took steps to find somebody who was properly qualified to manage finance. They allowed that person in the finance department to carry on the functions of finance without being interfered with. The leadership of the institution in terms of the council and the mayor were always on the ball in respect of checking on a quarterly basis and calling for information to support whether the financial improvement plan had been implemented. And the combination of that together with the proper institutional oversight has created an environment where this institution was, was able to record a clean audit because of the oversight, the skills that were put into the system, as well as the leadership of the council making sure that they leave the executive team under the municipal manager to do their day-to-day -day job and to implement the policies that support financial administration in a manner that has been agreed by the whole leadership. So that's what has happened and that's what we think is capable of being done even by those that have not yet reached that goal.